Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. It is Black History Month, and if you've been listening to our station since February began, you've likely heard spots that highlight the stories and accomplishments of Black Americans. Stories like this. At SDLPR, we're lifting our voices to honor Black History Month and to bring you this fact. American-born French entertainer Josephine Baker was the first Black woman to star in a motion picture. Baker sought to combat racism and adopted 12 children from around the world, whom she called her Rainbow Tribe. I'm Christina Fletes-Mock at STLPR, and I'm lifting my voice to honor Black History Month. It's not just Josephine Baker. These 30-second audio shorts honor more than 50 Black Americans, and you'll be hearing them on St. Louis Public Radio throughout the month. It's part of an initiative called Lift Every Voice, and it just so happens that Lift Every Voice is the brainchild of someone many of you will recall as a trusted and beloved voice out of this very station, Jerry Mitchell. Jerry was a regular companion to so many of us who tuned in to 90.7 in St. Louis, 90.3 WQUB in Quincy, and 88.5 KMST in Rolla. Every weekday morning from 2013 to 2017, Jerry hosted Morning Edition here at STLPR until she moved to the greater Washington, D.C. area. She's now the midday host at WAMU, where she covers news and community in and around the nation's capital. And it's from D.C. that Jerry created the Lift Every Voice initiative in 2022. The effort there has seen great success, and we're delighted to have Lift Every Voice making an impact on our airwaves, just as it is across the country. It's also a most timely and marvelous treat to have Jerry Mitchell join us now. Jerry, welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thank you so much for having me. So Lift Every Voice was an initiative that you started out there at WAMU. How did you arrive at the idea? Well, again, uh, Lift Every Voice is now in its third year in Washington, D.C., and uh, first year in my hometown of St. Louis, so I'm very excited about that. And this is what I call a passion project. When I realized the stories of Black history makers could be told by uh, on a broader platform, I explored the possibilities. It's authentic and it's academic, and it just feels really good to be back in the conversation at KWMU mm-hmm. with this project, which was created back in 2021. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we often talk about reaching younger audiences, and I know that education is sort of part of your background. So in that spirit... I mean, given whom you've worked with, with Lift Every Voice, can you describe the initiative, the way that you've talked about it with high school students, Cherry? Absolutely, because Lift Every Voice is an on-air, it's an online educational tool as well. It highlights Black changemakers in our history. I was inspired to create something brand new, something unique that was all-inclusive for the staff here at WAMU in Washington, D.C., And I often tell people that my two loves are education and radio. And if I could discover a way to marry the two, I'd be over the moon. And so with a great deal of creativity and a lot of hard work, Lift Every Voice was born. And um, with Lift Every Voice in 2024, now in St. Louis and in Washington, D.C., what the listener will hear, as you mentioned earlier, throughout the month of February, is a collection of 30-second promos which feature both familiar voices and those who work behind the scenes. And as you know, these are all of the people who make us sound so good every day. And I, I knew um, there was a powerful way to use the airwaves to educate the listening audience, as well as students, everyone. And we also educate ourselves about the countless contributions of African Americans, many of whom were and are still obscured in history, minimized in their contributions, or simply erased from our history books. So the concept of this project was so well received when I pitched the idea because we never had anything like this. Mm-hmm. 
the radio the radio station understood that by lifting every voice possible, we could all join the conversation and celebration of Black History Month as a team. Mm-hmm. And how was it that you chose people to highlight? Well, that's a good question. I'm an avid reader, mm-hmm. so it takes months to research Black history makers for this project because every year we highlight different lists of people. There's a different list of people. I'm allowed a total of about 50 to 55 promos because of the structure of the programming at the station. Mm-hmm. So I start with that number in mind, and then I decide who will be featured based on whether or not this Black history maker, uh, whether hidden facts around this person, or whether or not they're well known like a Barack Obama or a Stevie Wonder and each person is then added to one of the five categories which are business and science, music, sports, arts and humanities, lawmakers and activists. And then I have the task of rounding up a team of very eager and excited colleagues to record their side black history maker. Now some of the change makers like Stevie Wonder and Colin Kaepernick will overlap categories like Mm -hmm. music and activism or sports and activism. So I now have an editor, a web team, (laughs) and producers who help me with this overarching cast because many of these history makers have contributed to a broad range of achievements in our history. Mm -hmm. Now, Jerry, you mentioned earlier that every year the list of people changes. Can you talk with us about some of the Lift Every Voice profiles that are being highlighted this year? And is there, perhaps for you, someone among 2024's figures whom you came to know through this initiative that you, you know, that you did not have as much information about before you were encountering for the first time? This happens every year because I get so excited when I, I read a book or open up a, uh, a manual and I say, what, who are these people and why didn't I learn about them? And I'm going to tell you about one that I... I learned about. As we know, Super Bowl Sunday is just a few days away. Mm-hmm. And I recall during last year's Super Bowl halftime, I couldn't take my eyes off a young woman who performed sign language yes. alongside Rihanna. <laughs> and I later learned that this young woman's name is Justina Miles. She is an American sign language or what's called an ASL performer mm. who made history in 2023 as the first deaf black woman to sign at a Super Bowl halftime show. And then I learned about her connection to the D.C., Maryland, Virginia region. Uh, Justina is a current nursing student at Bowie State University in Maryland. And I just remember this young girl bringing all the energy and all the <laughs> attitude. <laughs> I do, too. And her, and her, you remember, too. And this was quite an ASL performance. I mean, she is a phenomenal young black history maker. Mm-hmm. So, yes, yeah, she is one. And then as we go back in history, um, another group that is um, featured this year, Black History Makers, is called the Black Nino Brothers. And I was blown away reading about these men. They were a family of prestigious, experienced African sailors. Their names mm. were Pedro Alonso, Francisco, and Juan. And they were essential to the transatlantic voyage to America in 1492. Now, of course, as we all learned in our history books, Columbus was featured as the leader of the voyage, right. but he would have never, ever gotten to his destination without these three black men. Now, Pedro piloted the Santa Maria, while Juan, the owner of the ship La Nina, actually mastered the vessel. So nobody at large talks about this band of brothers celebrating heroes like this. That's what Lift Every Voice aims to do. Mm-hmm. We're speaking with Jerry Mitchell, who is a St. Louis native and former STLPR Morning Edition host. She's also the creator of the initiative Lift Every Voice, whose spots we are hearing all throughout this Black History Month. Given that you are you're highlighting people that are maybe not as well known, if they're known at all, who is the intended audience for these spots, Jerry? Absolutely everyone. Everyone um, can learn from this, and I think it's a great conversation starter in the classroom, at home, the workplace, library, social media, I mean, everywhere, and all year round, because one month simply can't hold our history. It deserves to be told by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. And you are a St. Louis native, but why was it important to do this project, not just in D.C., where you are now, 
but here in St. Louis and at this station? Well, first of all, I'm ecstatic that it has reached across the globe, especially to St. Louis, because St. Louis has such a rich history. And every year since 2021, I think the station has noticed it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I make sure that notable St. Louisans are featured and included in Lift Every Voice. Uh, History makers like James Coupapa Bell of the Negro League Baseball History. Now, Coupapa Bell happened to be my godfather, so I was very proud to feature him in the first year. (laughs) And, of of course, Annie Malone, philanthropist and inventor, David Stewart, who is featured this year. Of course, Red Fox, Shirley LaFleur and Scott Joplin. That's just to name a few. Mm -hmm. And I know you can tell, DC can tell too, that I'm a very proud St. Louis native. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and one of the reasons we chose the the Josephine Baker clip to play during uh, the, or at the top of our conversation is that she is a a very well-known figure, but the every voice part is very much reflected uh, and it, it was really a beautiful thing to hear as a listener, because I was a listener first to the station before coming to work here. Jerry, mm-hmm. you created this project as a reaction to what you were seeing from Black History Month, or more to the point, what you weren't seeing. Who or what was missing, Jerry, and what made addressing that absence such a priority for you? Well... I'll say this. I was fortunate enough to attend Cartner Ritter College Preparatory High School in St. Louis, which is just right down the block from Mm -hmm. St. Louis Public Radio. Uh, Of course, I attended school on the north side, the other part of the north side, the very first school. But this is where I began to learn about the truth and history under the leadership of countless dedicated teachers, including the late Leon Henderson, Sage Gillum, Preston Thomas, so many more. But I was inspired by the eye-opening experience at Ritter that I returned to teach African American studies in 2000 at Ritter. And that was my way of giving back then. And now that I am a senior news anchor and host in D.C., this is my way of confronting the harmful approach of banning books and denying our stories in history. Mm. And uh, the beautiful thing now is that I work with two schools here in Washington, D.C. We have about six to seven students who are invited to the studios get voice coaching, and then they hit the mic to add their voices to the project. And again, combining radio and education is extremely fulfilling Mm -hmm. to me. Black History Mm -hmm. Month became an officially commemorated month 48 years ago, but observance of it for years has been limited to recognition of the same handful of African-American figures, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, George Washington Carver. They certainly deserve that recognition. But why is it, do you think, that we come back to these few people over and over again? And why is that not sufficient? Well, allow me to say that each one of these Black history makers is notable and brilliant in every aspect of history. But our history is so diverse and so encompassing. And before Rosa Parks, just for example, before she refused to give up her seat on the bus, there was a young girl, 15 years old, named Claudette Colvin, black Mm -hmm. girl. She refused to give up her seat on the bus. And as she cited her rights, now imagine that, at 15 years old, she was citing her rights. She was forcefully removed from the bus. She was brutally beaten by a policeman, and she was jailed. But as far as the movement went, she wasn't what they considered to have as the face of the movement. Mm -hmm. She was young and she was pregnant. And, of course, Rosa Parks, who I had the honor of meeting in person back in the 80s, is is an historical icon who truly earned her place in history. So nothing, we can't take anything away from inventors and scientists like George Washington Carver and, of course, the iconic Dr. King, but... I wanted to learn more about our history makers. When I was in grade school, we always had those same pictures above the chalkboard, and we were um, told to write a book report on one of those familiar faces. But I remember going home and telling my parents that I wanted to learn more. So they encouraged me to dig deeper, and I have done that ever since. So Lift Every Voice takes its name from a famous song that's been called the Black National Anthem. Why was that the name that you chose for this project? 
Well, the name of the project was certainly inspired by the title of the Negro National Anthem, written by James Weldon Johnson, who was another luminary in our history. He was a literary figure and highly educated civil rights activist in the early 1900s. And the music to the hymn was actually composed by his brother, John Rosamond Johnson, who many people have never heard of. And so I chose this um, this hymn and this title because as you learn about the stanza, and I actually um, talked to the staff here at the station and we combed through the lyrics and we dissected the lyrics to lift every voice. And while it is pain, a very pain um, history in its lyrics, it's also very encouraging and inspiring. It's full of hope mm-hmm. for our future. And is there maybe an anecdote, Jerry, that you can share that shows how this project has lived up to that name? Uh, I will say that, yes, if I could say that Lift Every Voice has become um, a movement. And that is what civil rights, that is what the period prior to civil rights, our history began long before the transatlantic voyage there's so much more to our history. And as we continue to live out our lives, we continue to fight in a current movement. Um, and that is what Lift Every Voice is doing. It's taking on a life of its own. And I never saw it getting as big as it is, but it's full of um, energy and excitement all throughout the D.C. area. You know, if I could, if I could, I, I really want to shout out Wayne Pratt and Greg Montanu at the station at St. Louis Public Radio for staying on top of this project. And um, to Tina, your general manager, to you, Elaine, and the entire team at St. Louis Public Radio. And Greg has already sent me a couple of the promos. I've heard them. You guys sound amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I just really want to thank you guys for believing in this worthy endeavor and for supporting a St. Louis homegirl who believed she could also make history in 2013, and I did as the first African-American female morning host at St. Louis Public Radio for mm-hmm. WMU. Well, I'm glad that, that I'm you also were the voice that I came to know when I first came to St. Louis, and uh, what what a treat and what a privilege to, to talk with you about this project and um, all the voices that are required to ensure that every voice is indeed lifted. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This episode was produced by Danny Wissentowski. With audio engineering by Emily Woodbury and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis on the Air proudly supports local artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.